New Relic makes it easy to start improving your app's performance immediately. Once you've installed the agent, you can view data and get started troubleshooting performance right away. This tutorial will cover how to interpret the data presented in the charts on the app overview dashboard, identify a performance problem, and how to use the drill down features in APM to find the code level location of the problem. So let's assume I've just installed my APM Java agent and I'm ready to take a look at the data reporting to my account. I'll click into the New Relic Pet Clinic demo app and take a look at the data. The first thing I see is my web transactions overview chart. I can also see various other charts for this application. The AppDex chart shows the calculated user satisfaction score from 0 to 1 across the period of time for this window. Here, I can see that my AppDex score has declined with my average being 0 0.83. This is due to an increase in overall response time, which directly correlates with my AppDex score. As my response time increases, my AppDex goes down. Below that, I can view the throughput for this application, the measurement of web requests per minute. The throughput appears to stay pretty consistent over this period of time. I can also view the error rate for my application over the given time window. During this period, I can see that my errors increase slightly, but it's still an average of 0.0754%. From the overview page, I also get a quick list of the most time-consuming transactions, the response time, and any transaction traces that are available for those transactions. I'll touch more on that shortly. Right now, this overview page shows me the details for this application for the last 34 minutes. I notice that there's a steady climb in response time for this application, and I want to see if this is part of a larger pattern for my app. So I'm going to use the time picker to change the window of time this chart is showing. I'll do this by clicking on the time picker drop-down menu in the upper left corner of the dashboard, click on the Ending Now tab, and then selecting the 24 hours option to look at the past 24 hours. I can also view a custom time window with a specific starting and ending point. Now I can see if there are any trends in my application's performance over this larger period of time, and better isolate problems occurring in this specific time frame. Now that I have verified that this response time is very slow, I'm going to zoom back in to see if there's a more specific instance of this performance problem by clicking and dragging my mouse across the spike to zoom in on it. Notice that as I zoom into this area further, all of the corresponding charts zoom as well. I can also view this data in a few different chart formats by clicking on the drop-down menu at the top of the main chart. It currently shows me the web transactions response time. When I click on the drop-down, I can see options to view web and non-web transactions in a histogram chart and a percentile chart. I can see from my overview chart that my web transactions overall response time include request queuing, JVM, and database times. I can also toggle the other components of this chart on and off to isolate the information that I'm interested in. This is helpful in providing more detailed information about individual components. For instance, if I'm responsible for database performance, I can turn off JVM to see that part of the chart more clearly. I can use all of these tools and features to help identify and isolate performance problems. Right now, it looks like the majority of the time is being spent in the JVM, which means that most of my web transaction time is being spent in my application code. So I'm going to investigate this by going to the Transactions dashboard. To navigate to the Transactions page, I can click on the Transactions tab located on the left of the page. I'm now looking at my Transactions page, which will give me a much more detailed view of performance measurements for individual transactions. There is a drop-down menu that allows me to sort the transactions in a variety of ways. Most time-consuming is the default sort for this list because it organizes the transactions by both the slowest and the most frequent. On the right, I can see an overview chart for my most time-consuming transactions. To view more details into an individual transaction, I can click on the transaction I'd like to see more information on. After clicking, I can see a rather familiar set of charts appear. I can see an overview chart for the time period I have selected with the various components of this transaction included. Right off the bat, I can see that the majority of the time for this transaction is being spent in a JSP, which is essentially a template used by my Java application. Below that, I can see the throughput for this particular transaction over my selected period of time. This might be helpful in determining whether there might be a correlation between increased requests and application performance. Below my throughput graph is the transactions breakdown table. This shows each of the segment's performance statistics for this transaction. As I can see, the JSP shown is accounting for 75.4% of the transaction time, so I'll want to investigate further why this is occurring. 
At the very bottom of my transaction drill down is a list of available transaction traces. Transaction traces are specific, individual executions of this transaction and provide a detailed view of where performance opportunities may lie. I'll click on one of these transaction traces to get a better breakdown of what's occurring with this transaction. One of the first things I notice when I click on a transaction trace is the Summary tab, which shows me the percentage of time spent in each particular component of this transaction. If I hover over a particular segment, I can see the percentage of time it took to execute. Scrolling down a bit further shows a summary table, which shows each component from slowest to fastest. For each component I get the name, count, which is the number of times the method was called, the duration, which is how long it took for this to complete. To get an even more detailed look into this transaction, I can click on the Trace Details tab at the top of this transaction trace. Here I can see a chronological, nested display of the method calls, database queries, and external services that took place over this transaction, and where potential opportunities for improving performance may lie. From left to right, there's a column for the duration in milliseconds, the duration percentage for each segment, the segment name, and the timestamp. To expand on each segment, I can click Expand Performance Problems. I can click the Collapse All button to collapse the segments into their parent method. I can also expand on a segment by clicking the chevron next to the segment name. As I scroll further down the transaction trace, I can see segments highlighted yellow that might be taking longer than expected, and red where a significant amount of time is being spent. I can see there appears to be a large amount of time being spent in my owner's list JSP. I can get more details about a particular segment by clicking on the microscope icon to the right of the segment name. Here I am provided a stack trace for this segment. Scanning further down into the segment, I can see that there's a red section called Application Code. This means I can't see what's happening here with the standard agent configuration, and some further custom instrumentation should be added to gain visibility into where the performance issue might be located. For now, this gives me a great reference point of where I should be looking within my code base to identify the potential problem. Now that you know how to identify performance problems using APM drill down features and locate their source, you're ready to start improving your app's performance.